The EU and the US have been squabbling about support for their respective aircraft makers, Boeing and Airbus, for decades. Despite this, the US has never resorted to such heavy-handed tactics with Airbus and the EU as it now has with Canada's Bombardier, placing thousands of jobs at the firm's Northern Ireland factory in doubt. And for good reason, the US would have too much to lose from such action. The EU is a big market with a powerful trade authority, and US producers are too dependent on the EU market for the US to risk retaliation. This case gives us a real taste of how the UK will be treated in negotiations over a US-UK trade deal post-Brexit, and how vulnerable the country will be. Disputes between governments over subsidies to aircraft makers are commonplace. Given the huge barriers to entry into the industry state support is indispensable, Boeing gets its subsidies through U.S. defense spending, which helps to finance the company's development costs, whereas Airbus has tended to benefit from more direct government assistance. The Canadian government has extended support to Bombardier to develop its new C-Series regional jet, leading the U.S. Department of Commerce to claim that the company is selling the jets in the U.S. market at below cost. Both the Canadian and UK governments claim the support they have extended to the firm complies with World Trade Organization rules. Despite this, the US has taken punitive steps against its two closest allies, imposing tariffs of 219% on the aircraft. Brexiters assume Britain will face a benign international environment the UK government, particularly its trade minister Liam Fox, places great faith in a trade agreement with the US, arguing that Britain will get a good deal because of the dense commercial links between the two countries. But trade deals are all about leverage, and leverage is determined by the size of the market. A comparatively small economy such as the UK's would enjoy little leverage in its negotiation with the US. And if the two countries do not agree a deal, the UK would have to settle disputes with the WTO. Cases take years and rulings are often ignored.